Now this illustration deals with grounding and bonding metal cable trays and the sections now are 392.60A, 392.30B3, 392.60C, and 392.100E. Starting to the right, we have the uh, industrial machinery or process equipment. And notice we have a conduit that is connected with a connector into the bottom of that solid bottom cable tray. That'd be okay, but you cannot connect it in such a manner that the smaller conductors could be damaged by the larger conductors. And in that case, you may have to run it uh, to the side and loop it in like we previously looked at. Now there's a new rule pertaining to the bonding uh, of the cable tray and the cable coming into the open uh, opening of that motor control center or switch gear. And notice now where that cable leaves the discontinued cable tray and loops right down into the enclosure. We have to seal in such a manner that uh, trash, other things, uh, varmints, other things can't get into that switch gear. The bonding jumper, it will not change. If you had a, uh, a, a say, a cable tray of 1.00, then that bonding jumper naturally be number four, as we quoted uh, earlier. Uh, but it does have to be bonded. It can't float and you cannot use the equipment grounds and the cables to uh, provide this bonding. You have to actually bond it, as shown, by 392.60B4, 250.96, and 250.102. But the main thing, uh, re uh, review this change. You just can't come into an open top now that remains open. You have to uh, close it with a bushing or some kind of uh, uh, fitting or some kind of covering that will not allow anything to gain access in, such as dirt, lint, dust, varmints, and things of that nature. So this is a, uh, a precautionary change uh, to prevent some kind of damage occurring inside of the equipment due to an opening at the top where the cable enters. And that's what this illustration is illustrating.